Good morning and welcome to 11.4, the last section for chapter 11. All right, so our objectives are we will be able to find the surface area of a solid by using nets and students will be able to find the surface area of a solid by using formulas. So um, let's take a look at this exploration. So we want to go to this link, click on various shapes on the left side of the screen, explore the page as you unfold the surface area of each um, figure. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So let's start with the cone. And so down here it says net. We can go ahead and open it up and we can kind of see how the shape lies out, right? So we can see how it lies down flat and we can see off here to the right um, what the cone looks like. And then, of course, we put it all back together and there's our cone. All right, let's go ahead and let's take a look at a square pyramid. So we take a look at this pyramid. Go ahead and open up the pyramid. Kind of looks like the star-shaped figure, <clears throat> but of course it is our square pyramid. Okay, let's see. This one is a trapezoid. So we aren't learning about trapezoids, but we can take a look at see what it looks like when we open it up, because that's what we're looking at today. So see how when we open it up, how we have all these different shapes and we put it back together we have this solid figure. Let's go ahead and take a look at a cylinder. Expand surface, there we go. So we see how it kind of just like expands out there. Yep, all right, uh, let's see, let's do a cube. Oh, the cube doesn't have the one. What about a rectangular prison? Let's go ahead and open this one up. We can see how this one lies there, right? There we go. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the notes. Let's take a look at this. So the surface area of a solid is the combination of the areas of each face of the figure. So if we take a look at the net of a pyramid, right? So we have the square on the bottom and then we have four triangles. So if we added four triangles together and then the base, we'd be able to get that. So if we take a look at example one, we want to find the surface area of the rectangular prism shown by examining its net. <clears throat> so we have our rectangular prism here, right? It's all put together. And then it's taken apart to where we have this shape. Um, it is color coded, color coded for us, which is nice. The green shapes, those are all going to be one area. So for my green shapes here, I have five and seven, and it's a rectangle. So I'm going to have five times seven, and that's going to give me the area of that green shape. So that's going to give me 35, right? And so that'll give me 35 for each green shape. All right, now if we take a look at like this pink shape here, this is also a rectangle. We just have to figure out the parameter. So we have 10 all the way over here, right? So it's gonna carry through, so this is also 10. And then same thing with our seven, our seven carries through. So this bottom part is seven. So I'm gonna take 10 times seven to give me 70. So the area of my pink figures are 70. All right, and then if we take a look at the purple areas, right, we have 10 by 5, so I'm going to take 10 times 5, I'm going to get 50. So now I have the area of each specific figure, so I can add them all together and find the surface area, so the total area of the entire figure. So I'm going to take 2 times 35 plus 2 times 70 plus 2 times 50. So instead of writing, you know, 35 plus 35, 70 plus 70, 50 plus 50. I just went ahead and multiplied them by two. All right, so I'm going to get 70 here plus 140 plus 100. Add those all together. I'm going to get 310 inches squared. So this is area, so our units are squared. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try example two here. So this, this one isn't color coordinated, um, but we can kind of see which ones match up with um, each shape. So go ahead and give that a shot. I'll pause the video 
and then when you come back the solution will be there. All right, here's number two. So I wrote down the area in each particular rectangle, and then I did the math over here off to the right. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next page. So the surface area of a rectangular prism is surface area equals two times length times width, plus two times width times height, plus two times length times height. Alternate formula would be two times um, capital B, so that is area of base, plus capital P, which is perimeter of base, and then, of course, H, which is our height. All right, so let's uh, analyze that top equation first. So if we think about how we did the last couple problems, right, it was just a bunch of multiplication steps, but there was a point in time where I did 3 times 2, right? We did that here. There was a point in time where I did 3 times 6, right? There we have that one. And then we also did 2 times 6, which is here. So I took each of them and multiplied them separately, and then multiplied that by 2, which is what I did um, in this part here, right? I multiplied each of those values by 2. So that is what we were just doing, and that is a wonderful way to get what you need because you know you're like, okay, I have this rectangle, this rectangle, and there's two of each rectangle. All right, but you can absolutely use that alternate formula, two times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height. All right, and then surface area of a cylinder. This one is um, two pi r squared. So remember, r is radius. That hasn't changed. And then I have 2, or plus 2 pi r h, so h is the height. Of course, the second r is also the radius. All right, and we can see that net of the cylinder. So we have two circles, so it makes sense that we have an area for two circles. And then we have this uh, rectangle-typed shape here. Um, since we are dealing with a circular figure, though, we continue to have that pi, so 2 pi r h. Um, all right, let's go ahead and try a couple of these. Let's go ahead and start with the rectangular prism. So the rectangular prism, I'm going to go ahead and use that top formula, so 2LW plus 2WH plus 2LH. So essentially, I'm going to take each of these individually, so 4 times 2.5, right? So 4 times 2.5, and that whole thing is being multiplied by 2 because we're going to have two rectangles with that dimensions. And we're going to add that width, 2 times, let's do 4 times 6, plus, I'm running out of room, let's go ahead and write it down here, plus 2 times, and then we'll do the last one, which is 2.5 and 6. So 2.5 times 6. And so from here, once you plug this into a calculator, sorry, my pen's glitching out, I'm not writing all my letters. Once you get here, um, you can take a look at what you have, you can, or sorry, you can plug this all into a calculator. So 2 times 4 times 2.5 plus 2 times 4 times 6 plus 2 times 2.5 times 6. So you can use that calculator, what we have been, you know, once you plug it into that formula, you can take out your calculator and plug everything in. And so once we do that, I'm going to end up with 98 millimeters squared. Okay, let's go ahead and check, check out the cylinder. So this time um, it gives us a diameter of 8. So my diameter equals 8 and the height equals 15. All right, so let's go ahead and write out our equation. So we have 2 pi, so 2 pi r squared. So if my diameter is 8, that means my radius is 4. So 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r, which is 4, my radius, and then my height, which is 15. Once again, we can go ahead and plug this into a calculator. It does want us to leave it in terms of pi, however, so we can take this step by step. Let's first start with the left side of my equation. So I'm going to have 2 times 4 squared, 
which is going to give me 32. Leave, leave me over with pi, right, because I don't want to plug pi into the calculator if it's in terms of pi. And then over here, we're going to have 2 times 4 times 15. So plus 120 pi. All right, and I just plug that into a calculator. You don't have to worry about trying to write it down or do it in your head. You can plug it into your calculator. All right, since it is, is in terms of pi, both of these have pi in common. So therefore, I can at, now add the numbers together to get 152 pi. And then we can put kilometers squared. So we leave it in terms of pi like that. We'll just do each side individually. Then we can add all those numbers together and just leave pi off to the side. Make sure you don't plug it into a calculator. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at 5 and 6. So here we have them. I'll go ahead and take a second, pause the video, and try these two out. All right, there is 5 and 6. So we have our cylinder and our rectangular prism. All right, let's go ahead and go to the last page, and we're going to be talking about pyramids and cones, so the surface area of a pyramid and a cone. So here we have, we have a large B, so remember that is area of base. And then we have a large P, which is perimeter of base. And then we have this cursive L, so it almost looks like a 1, but it is an L. Um, and that is the slant height. So remember how we were talking about every time we were finding the volume that we needed the height of the pyramid, not the slant height? Well, the surface area uses that slant height for both pyramids and the cone. All right, so here we have R, which is radius. And then we have this L, once again, that stands for the slant height. All right, so let's go ahead and give those a shot. Um, see that it does say that we are leaving it in terms of pi when we're using that for the cone. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at 7. So the surface area for a pyramid is the area of the base. So since it's a square pyramid, my base is 2, so the area of the base is going to be 2 squared. I'm going to say plus 1 half times the perimeter of the base. Once again, since it is a square, it's going to be 1 side times 4. So I'm going to say 2 times 4. All right, and then we're going to multiply it by the slant height, which is 3. And now I have my whole equation, and I can just plug it into a calculator. All right, so once I do so, I am going to kind of split it up into steps for this one um, so we can see it. So we have the 2 squared, which is 4, and then we're going to have 1 half times 24. And so now we can see a little bit more clearly what those numbers are. We're going to end up with 4 plus 12 to give us 16 feet squared. All right, let's go ahead and try a um, cone together. So number eight is a cone. We have to do pi and then r squared, so the radius squared, so six, plus pi times the radius, which is six, and the slant height. So I need the slant height here. That is the L. Um, so if we remember from last time when we were trying to find the height, like the actual height of the cone, uh, we created these right triangles. And it is going to also help when we are trying to find the slant height. So I have a 6 and an 8. I recognize I can divide both of these by 2. So I now have 3 and 4, which is a Pythagorean triple if we put a 5 here, 3, 4, 5. Which means to get to my question mark here, I have to multiply by 2, because that's what the other two were doing. So 3 to 6 is 2, 4 to 8 is 2. So that means my slant height is 10. Okay, remember once again it wants it in terms of pi, so I'm going to solve each side individually and leave pi out. So I have 36 pi plus 60 pi. Now that I have each of those, I can go ahead and just add the numbers together because they have a like term of pi. So 36 plus 60 will give me 96. So I have 96 pi. And there's no units on this one, but whatever those units would be, would be units squared. 
All right, let's go ahead and check out nine and 10. I want you guys to go ahead and try nine and 10. We have one cone and one pyramid. So with the cone, remember you have that 90 degree angle. So we are gonna have to figure out what the radius is for the cone. All right, go ahead and pause the video, try these two out. All right, there are your last two problems, nine and 10 for cones and pyramids. All right, so this last unit did have all the shapes that we are working with this unit, but we're just focusing on that surface area. So please be sure if you have any questions or need to double check any of those formulas, uh, please do so. Make sure to ask your teacher if you need any help and have a wonderful rest of your day.